What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video, and in this video we're going to be breaking down the 7 heroes to dominate Season 26. And with all the crazy changes, whether it be the Ash nerfs, the Hanzo buffs, the Wrecking Ball and Sigma nerfs, what are the best characters to play? So let's break down the top 7 right now, but go to the Game Leap website for in-depth advanced VOD reviews over every single one of the characters that we're going to talk about, so go check it out right now. Now, but let's jump into the video now kicking it off with the first character that I want to break down number seven on our list is a DPS none other than the newly buffed Hanzo now for those of you who don't know Hanzo storm arrow now has less time in between each shot so what that means is you can actually burst targets down a lot quicker with more storm arrows in rapid succession so for an example if an enemy is actually standing still a lot of times you could get in two storm arrows and double dink them before they have any time to move or react now this is a really good buff against all matchups, but specifically against Ana and Widowmaker. This is phenomenal because those are two characters that are more likely to stand still. But like I said, having Storm Arrow have less downtime in between shots just means more burst damage, period, which is just better for Hanzo for dueling just about any character in the game. Now that being said, the one downside to Hanzo right now is he doesn't really have a great shield tank to play with him. Shield tanks right now are having a hard time to say the least that being said if you get a decent pocket or if you're mechanically pretty good on Hanzo you can find a lot of opportunities to take these really proactive flanks or take the high ground and get pick after pick Hanzo has a lot of potential to carry tons of fights right now especially in the lower ranks a good Hanzo can be an unstoppable threat but I understand that Hanzo is not the easiest character to actually learn how to aim with, but what I would highly suggest is practicing in things like Triad Free For All because you get to go up against a lot of the most difficult to challenge enemy DPS like McCree, Soldier, Tracer, Genji. These are all really good ones to learn how to fight because remember, at Hanzo's core, he has the capability of winning a 1v1 against any character in the entire game. So best of luck if you want to pick up and master this Silent Archer. Now, moving on to number six hero to actually start playing in season 26 we actually have mercy who is still really really good now you're gonna see exactly why she's so good when we break down some of the other characters that are very spoiler alert mobility friendly and mercy being a mobility friendly support is a huge mark in her favor not only can she fly around the map giving heals to whoever she needs to but she's an amazing pocket and when we talk about hanzo and not on this list just barely missed the list Widowmaker these are amazing characters to pocket but the number two on our list is probably the best character you could possibly pocket on Mercy and we're gonna break that down but Mercy is just a really phenomenal character to play right now so if you're looking for a support to play and Mercy fits your fancy then definitely pick her up right now now moving down to hero number five this is our first tank on the list and it's none other than Roadhog now one of the most notable changes in the patch was Sigma's nerf his fall from grace and while he might still be viable at the highest ranks in any bit but the highest ranks he is absolutely atrocious and honestly tanking right now is really really bad where the majority of tanks just basically get insta deleted out of nowhere now Rodog is one of the few tanks that can actually stay alive he can do his own thing and he almost plays like a third DPS and with a lot less Ana being played Roadhog is not going to get naded nearly as much but it is really important for you to be careful about just how much burst damage is in the game right now hog can die out of nowhere even when he thinks he's safe with discord hanzo with a pocket or things like echoes beam out of nowhere just because you are a giant beefcake does not mean you're invincible so just make sure that you are hyper cognizant of what can really burst you down out of nowhere then we're going to the next character that you should definitely pick up and start grinding in season 26 is none other than Tracer, who was the top of the meta before and is still the top of the meta now, one of the best DPS you could play right now. Now, when I broke down an in-depth Tracer guide previously, I saw a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, just because Tracer's good at the high ranks doesn't mean Tracer can carry you in the lower ranks. Now, I'm sorry, but that might be the most incorrect comment that I have ever read. Now, the reason that Tracer can't carry at the lower ranks is not because Tracer is a bad character or Tracer doesn't have the capability to 
carry. In fact, it's far easier when you have worse tanks, worse peelers, worse supports. That just makes it way, way easier to carry on Tracer. The reason that people can't carry on Tracer is because they do not have the proficiency on Tracer to carry. It's really, really simple. Tracer has all the tools to carry. She can hit pulse bombs on support. She can solo DPS. She can poke down tanks. She has everything you could possibly need on a DPS to carry games. But yes, you might be right. Tracer does not just carry out of nowhere. Of course not. You have to put in the time and effort into improving the character before you can carry like a high level Tracer player would carry. But that doesn't mean that it's not worth the effort to improve with Tracer because Tracer is a character that is going to make you fundamentally better at Overwatch. You're going to grind your game sense, positioning, and your mechanics in the process. And once you reach that turning point with Tracer, where you really start to get the snowball rolling on your improvement, you're going to start getting pop off after pop off, hitting pulse bombs, carrying team fights, and really, you are going to be able to carry yourself out of whatever rank you're in just like that when you really start breaking through the wall of improvement. Now we're going to do the top three. The next hero that you should be playing in season 26 is a support your favorite Omnic, Zenyatta. Now Zen is a very difficult character to play if I'm being honest. He is like a glass cannon, really easy to punish, very hard for you to stay alive. And a lot of the time when enemies come and seek you out, a lot of the best ways for you to actually prevent them from killing you is actually preempt knowing that they are coming after you and tracking where they are coming to you and mechanically hitting enough shots on them to either just kill them outright or force them to retreat and get away. Now, the reason that that is so difficult on Zen is you not only need expert awareness and game sense, but mechanical skill as well. And that's why Zen has a really huge curve of improvement. And what I mean by that is I feel like the improvement or the improvement on Zen is not a straight line. It's something that you can struggle on Zen for a long, long time until you reach a certain point where you start veering very exponentially and get to the point where you start having a lot of impact on Zen and not just getting farmed every single game. Now, that being said, if you can get to that point, Zen is not only one of the most rewarding characters in the entire game to play and so freaking fun, but is one of the most impactful, capable of giving your DPS the leg up in matchups, absolutely helping your team delete tanks and and just being one of the best damage dealers in the game, period. Zen has so much high impact in the game, not to mention the fact that your Transcendence is a freaking phenomenal support ultimate right now. Zenyatta is one of the best characters you could possibly be playing, and if you're looking for support to pick up and start to learn to master, Zenyatta might be your best bet. Now moving on to the last DPS that we have on this list. Number two, the best DPS you could possibly be playing in Season 26 and it's Echo. Now, this is the character that we were alluding to when we were talking about who Mercy could pocket, and it is definitely Echo. With Ash not being able to one-shot headshot anymore with the damage boost, and hit scans in general being fundamentally weaker because a lot of the hit scans characters like McCree don't have a reliable Sigma to play around most of the time, Echo is just going to be amazing in a hyper mobile comp. Echo has the capability to poke from range, build up ultimates that are just going to turn team fights, especially if you copy tanks that get instant value, and Echo of course has the capability to really 1v1 just about any character in the game. Now learning Echo is not easy by any means, and one of the big things that you gotta master on Echo is very similar to what we call the duality of Genji, because Echo kind of plays the same way, and it's understanding the difference between that passive, neutral playstyle of just poking from mid, poking from distance, building up ult charge, and then going proactive and trying to make a play with your beam and your mind. Learning how to pivot between your neutral game and that proactive game is one of the things that can really differentiate decent echoes from really good echoes and you gotta learn how to toe the line between going in aggressive enough to get that kill but not too aggressive to where you end up getting caught out and feeding instead. Not only does Echo have one of the best ultimates in the game but she can duel just about almost any character in the game and she has crazy mobility meaning that she should die very little and never get caught out hypothetically if you play her perfectly 
Echo is just like the all-in-one package, and if you're looking for a character to master this season, Echo might be the perfect character for you, and if you are not playing Echo, no matter what role you are playing, you need to be thinking about how you're going to be dealing with good Echoes, because I promise you, you will be going up against them. Now, moving on to the last character that we need to talk about in Season 27, the number one character, the number one hero to play and master is none other than Wrecking Ball. Now, Wrecking Ball is just one of the few tanks in the game, sadly, that doesn't just insta-die. I know that tanks have been really getting kind of shafted in the patch notes recently, but Wrecking Ball is still alive and still thriving, even post-nerf. Now, specifically on Wrecking Ball, there are multiple things that you need to keep in consideration. First off is the enemy team CC. What do they have? What can stop you? And how much? So that's the first thing, and that's going to basically dictate how aggressive you could be on Wrecking Ball. The second thing is, what are your characters or your teammates playing that can go in with you? Are they playing Trace or Echo? What can they combo with your slam? And how can you create space in a way that your teammates can follow up on? And then the third thing is, who on the enemy team can you specifically harass? Harass. There's always going to be some character that you as Wrecking Ball can really, really harass and actually just mess up. Whether it's like a Ryan Zarya, you can boop through them indefinitely and they can't do anything about it. You just keep displacing them over and over and over again. Or maybe the enemy team has a Zen and the Zen is often going way too aggressive off to the side. You can just sit on that Zen and if anyone on your team even puts a little bit of damage into that Zen with you, it's a very, very easy kill. On top of that, of course, Wrecking Ball is the number one kill counter to snipers period there's a lot to love about wrecking ball but you just got to make sure that you're adapting your play based on what you have what the enemy has and who you should be specifically targeting you do all those things and you're going to be able to get a lot of value on wrecking ball at the very least climbing to the diamond rank on wrecking ball might just be one of the simplest things ever as long as you're not feeding every single fight and you're consistently swinging through the enemy i promise wrecking ball is a very very good pick right now in season 26 he is just the best tank by far. So do yourself a favor, go pick him up. And if you want to know how to master him or any of the characters on the list, do yourself a favor, go check him out on the Game Leap website in the links down below because we have in-depth advanced Grandmaster VOD reviews over every single one. But thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and of course, until next time.